I have four different DIY greenhouses on my homestead. Each has their own specific purpose and today I wanted to go around and talk about how each of my greenhouses is handling winter so far. Greenhouses are an important part of my plan to be self-sufficient due to how far north I am. I plan on doing a more in-depth video about overall pros and cons of each greenhouse style at a later date. This video is going to be geared towards winter performance. Quick note before I get started, I don't heat any of my greenhouses during the winter. It's too cold for too long up here to do that cost effectively. The goal of these greenhouses are to extend my season on both sides. I'm starting off with our stick frame greenhouse we have here. So far I'm really pleased with how this thing has shed snow. We framed it 24 inches off center and so far that's working really well. We were kind of discussing about if we should do 16 or if 24 was going to be good enough, but it's definitely good enough so far. I had to use a rake to get some snow off of here once, but other than that, the snows came off by itself and we haven't had any issues there. This was the last greenhouse we built. We got it done the day before it started snowing and turning extremely cold up here, so I didn't get any temperature readings or anything like that. But I plan on documenting all the temperatures this spring when it gets warmer and I'm gonna be doing updates on all this periodically. We put a support for the ridge beam in the middle too, uh, just to give us some extra support for the snow load and so far we've had no issues with anything snow related. I still have to do the interior in here, all the raised beds and shelves I'm gonna build and all that, but we also have to figure out the ventilation. We didn't really put any ventilation in here um, when we were building it. We left the doors pretty big though, so we figured that might be good enough, so we're gonna kinda play that by ear. But we'll see, we're gonna figure this out as we go. One thing I wanna mention quick before I get too far into this, we had a snowstorm a couple days ago and it snowed steady for like 40 hours, 44 hours, somewhere in there. So it was a good day to do a winter update, in my opinion, because they had some steady snow for a while and it accumulated and it kept piling on. So it was a good day to see how they would handle some real snowfall. The next stop is this A-frame greenhouse. We built this to get an extra harvest of cold hardy produce on both sides of our growing season. So we wanna get carrots, beets, radishes, spinach, anything along those lines in here before our last frost date and hopefully get a harvest of those and do the same thing on the end of our growing season and get some more harvest into the winter. We made this a very steep A-frame to be able to handle the snow and make it so I can stand in here comfortably. I'm very tall, so it would be annoying to constantly have to kink my neck over to stand in here for a long period of time. So it accomplishes both of those goals really well. This thing sheds snow, no problem. The only issue that I've kind of had with snow so far is there's not enough space for the snow to fall below the greenhouse, so I kind of have to get out here and shovel off a path below because the snow accumulates when it falls down and stops snow from falling off eventually, so I have to shovel it off, but that's not too big a deal. I would recommend that if you don't want to come out here and shovel, just building the sides up a foot or two and giving the snow plenty of room to accumulate. As far as temperature readings go, this greenhouse performed really well. It did what it was supposed to do. We tracked temperatures for about a month in the late fall, and when temperatures at night got to freezing, a little bit below freezing, this thing stayed around 36, 38, high 30, somewhere in there. So that worked out really well. And on days when it was like 70, 75, it would stay around the 80. So it really regulated temperature. This greenhouse performed better than the cattle panel, which was the other greenhouse that we were measuring. So this is my cattle panel greenhouse. And first thing I wanna talk about is my geese destroyed the plastic on this one. And this was one of the reasons we ended up getting rid of them. They chewed a huge hole in the bottom of this plastic sheeting. And I think that coupled with some of the tears that I put trying to clear off some of the ice that was on here um, eventually led to wind ripping through here and tearing the plastic completely off of this greenhouse. I ended up zip tying a tarp to the cattle panels and that's working out well. I'm using this right now as a chicken compost area, a place for me to dump food scraps and a place for them to come hang out that doesn't have snow on the ground. And it's working really well for that. As far as temperatures went, we actually got a couple weeks of readings before the geese started tearing holes and skewing all of our data. And what we found was that during the hottest part of the day, when it would be like 70 or 80, this thing would get well over 100. Like we had a couple of readings like in like the 120s, I think close to 130 even. So it would get really hot and then at night when it was freezing, it would still get down to freezing. So it didn't really hold its heat very well, but that could be due to my door framing or leaving the door open some days because there's chickens running through here. I'm not exactly sure, but 
If you're trying to grow in one of these, you're probably gonna need some more ventilation when it's warm out and some frost protection, possibly when it's colder. But as far as handling snow, I have no complaints. I was hesitant to even build with cattle panels up here with how long our winters are and how much snow we get. And I've seen a lot of videos of them collapsing on people. But my brother and I, when we built this, we made sure that we have a ridge beam and we put another one of these supports for the ridge beam in the ground. And so far, this has had no issues handling the snow load and a lot of the snow even falls off so there's just a little bit on top that kind of sits here but that ridge beam of support takes care of that since this plastic got ripped off i'm gonna have to decide what i'm gonna do moving forward i might keep it as a chicken hut and kind of keep it the way it is right now and just keep it as a compost shelter a place for my chickens to go hang out and a place for them to be in the winter uh, which is really nice to have and it would save me from building another compost shelter which I was planning on doing so I might leave it that way and just keep the tarp on for that because then, then I don't have to buy more plastic sheeting which is pretty expensive the other option is I buy another roll of plastic sheet and I put the plastic on here and I start growing food in here which would be great it's very spacious we can grow a lot of food in here the issue with that becomes A, I gotta buy plastic, and B, I gotta figure out how to run water down here, and this isn't in the most accessible area, so it just would kind of be a hassle to grow food in here more than other areas, and we have three other greenhouses that are devoted to growing food and a huge garden, so I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do as of right now, but I think I'm leaning towards, if I had to choose today, I think I'm leaning towards just keeping it the way it is and kind of using this tarp as a shade area for my chickens in the summer and a winter hangout for them when it's snowing. But yeah, overall, this thing has handled snow very well, a lot better than I was even expecting. I would just say if you're building one of these in the winter, I would invest in a ridge beam. We just used a two by four ridge beam and a log we had to support the ridge beam and that's working out really well. And these things haven't collapsed yet haven't really looked like it. They've been struggling at all to hold the snow load and we've had a few snowstorms now so we've kind of got a good gauge on how they handle everything and so far checks out with me. I would give it a thumbs up. Just make sure you don't let your geese in here. And the last stop on the tour of my greenhouses is this metal hoop house. My brother built this five, six years ago now, a long time ago, and it kind of got taken down and rebuilt and he ended up using metal fence post conduit the second time around. I'll link the video on how he bent those poles if you're interested in checking that out. This is actually our only greenhouse without a ridge beam. I think this current build has made it through three winters now. This will be its third. And it's still standing, no real issues. It needs some help with the snow sometimes. It doesn't like shed off or fall off like the other ones do, which isn't too big a deal. And with how simple and cheap this build is, it's probably something that's worth it. The only thing that's a little scary it's probably hard to see on camera, but it kind of uh, indents in between the poles, like it pushes the plastic down in between the poles, and I don't really like the look of that, so I'm gonna clean off the snow once I'm done talking to you guys here. We opened up the sides of this greenhouse last spring. We cut the ends completely off. There was just so many dead bugs in there, and it was disgusting, and we didn't really want that around our food, so we thought it was just better to open up the sides. We don't really have any temperature readings in here, but I imagine it would perform similarly to the cattle panel. I would assume it gets pretty hot in here during the day in the summer, and at night it doesn't really hold this temperature that well, especially now that it doesn't have any sides and there's a hole cut along the bottom for ventilation. But like I said, we'll do some more in-depth pros and cons for each design and everything, but I'm very happy with how this performed for how simple the design and build is. And I'm planning on overwintering some chickens in here next year and kind of using it in the same way as we do our cattle panels during the winter at least. We're going to be getting a lot more chickens this year, greatly expanding our flock. I'm going to be using them in a lot of different ways around my homestead. I've touched on that a little bit in past videos and I'm going to do more in-depth videos on that coming up. But yeah, this thing is still standing after a few years and a few run-ins with our winter up here. So I really couldn't be happier with how this is holding up. It just needs a little bit of help with the snow every now and then. But it's not too bad for seven metal poles holding up some plastic sheeting. So to recap, I would say that using rigid plastic in your greenhouse builds like I did with these two, it's going to result in holding the temperature better and less maintenance during the winter with the snow. And if you use plastic sheeting like I did with my cattle panel and metal hoop house, it's much more cost effective, 
but you're probably gonna have to be out here during the winter getting the snow off of them and maintaining it during that time. Thanks for hanging out with me today. All four of my greenhouses are doing well. I'm gonna attach videos to the builds of all these greenhouses. And at the end of the video here, I'm gonna put my playlist to all of my greenhouse builds. So if you're interested, check that out. I'm gonna be doing updates on all these periodically, temperature readings, all that good stuff. Last year was my first year on the homestead. I really focused on building infrastructure. And now that a lot of that's done, this next year, I'm gonna be putting much more of my focus into growing food. So I can't wait to get into these greenhouses, finish up everything that needs to be done and get everything planted and start harvesting some produce.